Good evening. Welcome as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. In today's gospel, Jesus instructs Simon to pull out into deep water and lower his fishing nets for a catch, protesting all the while that they have fished all night and caught nothing, Simon does so, and he and his fellow fishermen are re rewarded with an abundant catch. When we are discouraged, Jesus may encourage us to keep trying just one more time and we also may be surprised by abundance. In addition to your own personal intentions, please remember the people of the parish. Our presider today is our pastor, Father Darrell Winkler. Please stand. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your breath. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. We've gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us be mindful of our need for God's mercy and forgiveness in our lives. Lord Jesus, you filled the nets to bursting. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you remind us not to be afraid. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you make us fishers of people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And now let us join Christians around the world in giving God glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord mercy on us. You take away the 
the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. O oh God, you teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now this, that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the word of my mouth in the presence of the angels I will bless you I will adore before your holy temple in the sight of the excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. 
In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. All the rulers on earth shall thank you when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O oh Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. In the sight of the angels, I will see. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand. This is the good news through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the Church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of the apostles, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them 
and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and he taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and we have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came, and when they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon Peter and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and they followed Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Earlier this week, I was um, not sure. I forget, I was, I was on the internet and looking up something, Googling something, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I, I came across, I think I was on Facebook, that's where I was, and I saw a post from, because I, subs, I uh, follow a couple of uh, Facebook communities, one of them is called Commonweal Magazine. It's a Catholic magazine. It's been around since the Depression back in the 30s. And it was a magazine that really some of the best authors, Catholic authors in the United States, they wrote for it. Some very insightful Catholics, even theologians, and really brilliant thinkers. So I subscribe to it because I like to read what brilliant people are saying about the church, about this world. And in this particular issue, they had a podcast. It was one hour long. Do you know what a podcast is? It's like a, a documentary that you listen to. Uh, and they had a podcast, it was an hour long, and the theme of the podcast was why I came, why I left, why I stayed. So it was about different Catholic people who, um, why, why some of them were leaving the church, why some of them would stay, it was their experiences. And I remember, um, Listening, there were six people they interviewed in this hour-long series. And one of them was a very traditional Catholic. And he said, you know, I'm staying, but I'm not happy. I don't like the direction of the church that this Pope is leading us to. This was done in 2018. And at the time, the Pope was, had another synod going on uh, about uh, the families. And in it, the topic of what do we do with Catholics who get divorced and remarried? Because the teaching is they're not allowed to receive communion after that. And the Pope was saying, let's rethink that. Let's rethink this. Maybe it uh, doesn't hurt if we give them communion. Maybe it helps them. So this traditional Catholic said, when the Pope said that, I said, he's going against our teachings. And so I remain in the church, but I feel like I'm in exile. It's an interesting perspective, but that was his experience. That's his, the way he lives his life in the church. And then there was a woman they interviewed and why she left. And she talks about being a young woman uh, vo volunteering in a Catholic organization 
that had outreach to people in, in Alaska. And when she got there, there was a Catholic radio station. It was founded by this priest that was revered. And this Catholic station became a very popular thing. You could hear it in the restaurants in Nome, Alaska. And people listened to it because there would be messages, you know, be safe, it's, it's snowing at, at, at this particular place, and there'd be information. And then there were homilies and reflections, and I think they had rosary in the evening and things like that. Very Catholic radio program. And it was everywhere in that area, and she went to help work in that. And then she learned later that the founder, who was a big person, you know, had been um, arrested for you know what, sexual abuse. He abused a number of women. And this did a number on her mind. This did something to her faith. She said, I worked with him. And, uh, and others, you know, and this is what happened. I felt like I was lied to. I was so discouraged and I, I, that was it. it can't go back. And then they interviewed a young, another young woman, why I stay in the church. And um, so they talk, so these people were giving their experiences. And what we have now, we have an opportunity for us to reflect ourselves. Why, why did we come today? Why are we here now? What allows us to come back? And why do we remain? And why do we, and we know people who have left. And there are people who are on the verge of leaving and there's people on the verge of this and that and the other. And these experiences for Pope Francis are important and this is why we're having a synod. He said, speak, tell us. Tell us your experience. We need to hear it. We want to hear what you say. Because it might be an experience of healing and transformation in your lives and in our lives if you do this. So that's the whole synodal process. Now, um, I've been thinking about my own experience then. You know, why do I stay? My mother and her family, they were all, they went to resident, my mother was a native woman. And she, you know, they were all in residential schools. And they all suffered. And my mother died at the age of 50 and I think it's because of colonialism. That's why she died at such a young age. She died because she was a native person. She died because she felt that she was second class. And this wears on your mind. And I don't think she received the healing that she needed. That in itself might be a good reason to leave the church. But I remain, and these are some of my experiences just from today. This is some of my experiences. This morning I had a baptism here. There were two different families. There was a young family that was here and it was a six, week, six weeks old baby, it's tiny, just so tiny. And they were bringing this child in to be baptized. I was so afraid to, to make sure I didn't get water in her face when I was baptizing her. She was so precious, but so tiny. And it was just, and that was the parents, you know, and I got to see that, witness the joy that the parents were having for their baby. And then the couple on this side, there's a family, and they had a little girl who was about four, and what a talkative little girl. And, and I asked a question, and she had all the answers. She was answering for her parents. And she had a little two-year-old brother, and I baptized these children. It was such a beautiful, joyful experience being with these families who love their children and want to hand on the faith to their kids, to their children. That's what they were here for today. I got to, I got to participate in that. And then after I had an appointment because someone was bought a brand new car. They'd saved and saved and worked and worked hard and they got a car and they said, Father, can you bless our car? So I went and blessed it. And the Rearview mirror had a beautiful set of rosaries. They said, oh, bless them. Make sure you bless the rosaries too. Rosary, because we want Mary to protect us. Pray for our protection when we're traveling. So I blessed the car. And then I get back to the house and I want to do some work back to my rectory. And then I get a phone call because I'm on call this today. Not usually, but I was on call for emergencies today and I got a call to the Civic. You know, and then I went to the Civic, and there was a woman 
with her son and daughter, and she's in her 80s, and she's had a brain tumor, and she's in the very last stages. And they, the, the, the son and the daughter wanted their mother to receive you know, anointing of the sick, the, the last kind of ritual for their mother. And, and I was with them and spent a little bit of time with them. And that's what an experience just to, in a day. And then I'm talking on people, you know, I'm on the phone and talking to friends, people, my family, my sister calls me 10 times a day. So I have a lot of experiences and I call them privileged moments that I'm allowed to participate, to share in with, in people's private lives, whether it's at the beginning of their, a baby's life or at the end of a mother's life. I get that. You know, I'm not lying. Those were true experiences today. That's what I had. That's what I had today. And now I'm here with you, all of you today. And my life is full. My heart is full because I get the privilege of seeing God's work and action in families and in the lives of people. So we see in the readings today men, persons, who have powerful experiences in their life also. I'm going to wrap it up quickly. But we hear the story of Isaiah. What an amazing vision he experiences at the beginning of the book of the prophet Isaiah. He, he has a vision, and in his vision he sees God, who is above everything. It's just majestic. He's so majestic that only a little hem of his cloak can fit in the temple. He's seeing God in heaven. And all the angels are there. And his first reaction is, I am unworthy to be in this. What am I doing here? And when he says that he's unworthy, then an angel comes down with a hot coal and puts it to his lips and says, now you're purified. And then God says, I need a messenger. Who will I send? And Isaiah says, send me. His experience was so transformative that he wants to rip, wants to do God's work. And then we see Simon Peter in the boat and he's encountering Jesus and Jesus makes him do some fishing and he catches such an abundance of fish that it nearly sinks two boats. And Peter realizes, oh my God, this is a holy person and I, I'm not worthy to be in the presence. I'm a sinful person, let me hide. And Jesus says, no, don't. Don't be afraid. You're going to be doing great works. I'm going to be with you. And then we have Paul in his letter to the first, first letter to the Corinthians. And he begins to, he, these people know his experience. He founded the community. The part that we read from today was they're having doubts they're having um, doubts about the resurrection. Is this really true? Was there really, did Jesus really rise from the dead? Was he raised from the dead? And now seated at the, is he really? They're having doubts. And Paul said, listen, I'm handing on to you what was handed on to me. And I can't believe that I'm being able to hand this on to you because I was the worst person. I was persecuting the church. And somehow God reached out to me and gave me a vision of the Lord and it changed my life and I can never go back. All I can do is preach this message. I hand on to, all I can do is hand on to others what has been handed on to me. And I work hard. I work harder, he says, than any of the others. But he said, don't think I'm bragging. The reason I can work hard is because God's, God's grace is in my life. God's love and God's grace. What is grace? It's that power that does for you what you could not do for yourself. That's grace. And he said, I have it. God is helping me to do this kind of work. So these people have very powerful experiences. It's all about experience. That's what I'm reflecting on today. What is our experience? How do you experience the Lord, the God, the higher power, the creator, 
Gemnado, as we say in Ojibwe. What, how do you experience that power that is the creative, which created this, everything that exists? Because that creator wants to, you to experience, to give you an experience too. We're all called to, to have a share in the experience of others, in the experience of the Lord. And we do receive it. And that's the challenge of spiritual growth, is to become aware of it. How did I experience the Lord? I have to rethink. Where did I experience the Lord today? How have I always experienced God in my life? And how does it affected me? There's, I'm afraid there's a lot of people who never have that kind of reflection. They don't know because they haven't sat down and said, you know, is, what's my experience of the creator? What's my experience of the, that which is transcendent, of that which is holy, holy, holy? But when we do ex reflect on it, then we can begin to be thankful that we have had experiences of the Lord in our life. I want to pray. Let us all pray for people who have been so hurt by the church that they've left it. Let us pray for those people whose experiences have not been healing, but hurtful. Let us pray for all these people and may our prayer help them get a better sense of things in life. Having listened to God's word, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our creator, your spirit is at work in our world. Hear the prayers we, br we bring before you this day. For the church, as it commemorates the World Day of the Sick this coming week, may it remember that the ministry of Jesus to the sick is central to its life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he may be inspired by God's Spirit in his ministry to the people of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on the delegation visiting Rome to meet with Pope Francis at the end of March, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our faith community, that we may have the grace to recognize our gifts and talents and to share them for the greater glory of God, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the people of the world, 
that we amend our lives immediately by refusing more plastic that cannot be reused and to remind ourselves that lasting change begins with us, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For communities fostering the vocations of priests and deacons, religious sisters and brothers and lay ministers, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For worldwide peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are sick and suffering mentally, physically, or spiritually, we pray especially for Dewan Williams, John Dorner, Marie Smith, Amanda Manette, and Aidan Warswick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, we remember especially Dr. Paul Hoy, Bill Fagan, Marianne Crows, Bob Young, Lois Ryan, Marie McCarthy, and all who have died from the coronavirus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers we bring before you this day. We trust that in your great kindness and your generosity, you will hear and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm restrains the restless wave, who told the mighty oceans deep its own Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom. And she shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven and with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. 
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, you who love the human race and you who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, Marcel, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. We remember especially Paul Hoy and Bill Fagan, Marianne Crows, Bob Young, Lois Ryan, Marie McCarthy, and all those who have died from the coronavirus. Admit them all to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we too may come to live in eternity with you and the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Basil and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we all have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy that you should enter under my roof. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. If you 
keep my commands. No longer servants, but friends. Let us be bread, blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the Let us pray. O oh God, you have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We just have one or two announcements. Two or three. Five announcements. Sister Eva Solomon's presentation entitled Healing in All Directions is, this, is at this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Zoom link is, in, is on the parish website. If you are able to volunteer your help in the parish hall on Friday, February 18th from 2 to 6 with the Knights of Columbus in making or bagging sandwiches, please contact John Waters. Details are in today's bulletin. Please see the bulletin for other activities happening in our community. And the please Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace.
to love and serve the Lord and one another.